In this video, we're going to show you how to swap out your stock rear rubber brake lines for longer and stronger ones, eliminating the risk of catastrophic failure. With Toyota's independent front suspension, we don't get a lot of articulation up there. So even with a three inch lift, the stock brake lines still have plenty of slack, even at full drop. But the rear, with a typical three inch lift, has the capability of getting a lot of down travel. So much so that the stock rubber brake lines can reach their limit and stretch. Possibly even break. Possibly even break. We're going to be replacing our stock lines with these we got from Toy Tech Lifts. They have three inches of extra length and are shielded with stainless steel. Another benefit of replacing the lines is the opportunity to replace all the fluids in the system with fresh. It's not necessary for you to do it, but for us to get better camera shots, we took the tires off. A little tip, spray down these fittings with a little PB blaster about an hour or so before you start, especially if they're rusty. Before removing the clips that hold the lines to these brackets, I'm going to first break loose this nut here that's on the steel line with one of these. It's a flare nut wrench. After running to the store for a replacement for our missing 10 millimeter, this type of wrench greatly reduces the likelihood of rounding over these fittings. That one's loose. That one's loose. Now on to these two down here at the axle. Okay, now we can take out these little clips that hold the line to this bracket. Now to get the clips out, I'm going to first try a pair of pliers and try to pry them. Yep, that, that's it. You can also put a screwdriver in here too and pry them out with that too. And that one's loose. There. Those came out a lot better than I thought they would. Okay, now that they're loose, we can get a wrench on down here on this part of the line a little bit better. So I'll put the line wrench up on there and put this wrench on here. And hopefully, oh hell, you can just do it by hand. I'm sorry if my hands are in the way, but there's not a whole lot of room right here. There we go. Right, this line is nice and loose already too, so I can just unscrew that out of there. Be careful with these steel lines. You don't want to bend them too much. Now that the bottom is disconnected, now we can just spin the hose for the stubborn one that was up here at the top. And that one's off. All right, now on to putting in the new ones. We're going to start at the top here. Push that through the bracket. And then these were a little stubborn at the top. So we're actually just going to thread the new line onto them. Being careful you don't cross thread them. Now there's no need for any thread sealant on these because they actually seal uh, down inside that fitting and uh, no fluid is ever going to get up by the threads. There we go. Yeah, sometimes these fittings don't uh, spin freely on the steel line uh, because of rust or, and corrosion and that. So instead of wrestling this and accidentally twisting the line and having to replace the whole steel line up in there just leave that alone and just thread this on the line the rubber line on like this and don't touch that okay now to tighten them up we put that line wrench back up here on the top to hold it steady so it doesn't spin at all then take our 18 millimeter down here at the bottom and we'll do all the tightening up down here at the bottom fitting. I 
and you want these pretty snug. Be careful you don't get a bunch of uh, rust or debris in there while you're pushing this in. Okay, now we can tighten it down with the two wrenches. Now we can put the clips back in and they go like this where the, the arch is at the bottom at the bracket. Just slide that into that slot on the fitting of the new hose and push it all the way in. All right, we are good to go here. Now we need to bleed all the air out. There are bleeder kits out there that you can buy, but honestly, if you have someone to help you, you don't really need one. Now we're gonna make sure that the master cylinder is filled to the top with new fluid. Now to get all that air and the old fluid out of the system, we have to bleed everything. And we're gonna start at the caliper that's furthest away from the master cylinder underneath the hood, and that is the passenger rear. In our fifth gen 4Runner, we have an electric brake booster. So the key has to be in the ignition on position. This is the bleeder valve on the caliper. It has this little rubber cap on it that we just take off. And then we put on, this is a 10, 10 millimeter wrench. Hopefully you still have one in your toolbox. And then we'll take a, a little piece of clear hose and put it on there. And that goes down into a little bucket on the floor. Then Mary gives the pedal a few pumps to get the fluid moving, and then she holds it down to the floor until I tell her to let up. Okay, pump the brakes. Pumping brakes. Okay, hold them down. Okay, the fluid is definitely getting clear, so that's it there. Okay, let off. Now we'll go to the uh, driver side rear and bleed it. But before we do that, we're going to go back up front and make sure that the master cylinder is filled back up to the top. Okay, we filled up the master cylinder again. Now we're on to the next furthest away from the master cylinder, which is the front passenger side. Now, unlike the rears in the front, you don't need the key on the ignition on position. Okay, pump them. Hold them. Okay, let off, pump them. Hold them. Okay, that's a nice clear fluid coming out. Then, last one, over on the driver's side. Well, we're all done, and now you'll see why we wanted to change out our brake fluid. Brake fluid degrades and breaks down over time. You can see the difference between the old and the new. Uh, most of this is uh, from dirt and debris that is collected from inside of the lines and the calipers, and a little bit of moisture gets in there, and it just gets old from all the, the heat and the pressure. So it's always recommended to change out your brake fluid. Some people say every 30,000 miles, we're at 80, so it's best to just check your owner's manual to see when the recommended uh, mileage is to change out your brake fluid. Well, that'll make me feel a little bit more comfortable next time we have the rear all flexed out and knowing we have fresh brake fluid. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. If this is your first time watching one of our videos and you'd like to see more, hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to ring the bell if you want to be notified. Are you finished now? Guess not. You're kind of holding up production here. You done?